Hey guys, Rachel Cook, Doctor of Audiology at Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in today's video, I'm going to be telling you about hearing loss that can be cured. Coming up. Whether new or old to the symptoms, you know that hearing loss can affect the way that you communicate with your friends, your family, and your coworkers. It's no surprise then that it seems as though everybody is looking for their own cure for their hearing loss. Hearing is a very complex sense, requiring several moving parts to work together perfectly or risk trouble. Hearing loss can develop for many reasons, including inherited conditions, acquired from loud noise exposure or the use of ototoxic medications, or from the natural progression of aging or other medical conditions. As with any other medical condition, as soon as symptoms start, it's natural to seek out answers and treatment. But hearing loss is not as widely understood by the public like many other medical conditions, which means that you may not know what to do if you start experiencing hearing loss, tinnitus, or vertigo. Additionally, you may be wondering if a cure for your situation even exists because you could make the argument that several forms of hearing loss can be cured. And those are exactly the types that we are going to be talking about today. But before we do that, if you could please take a moment to give this video a thumbs up, it really helps bring videos like these to a wider audience. And of course, if you haven't yet already, make sure you hit that subscribe button with notification bell so that you never miss any one of our newly released videos. Now, to understand which types of hearing loss can be cured, it's important to know how humans hear. There are three main parts of the ear, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. Sound is a vibration that's first collected by the outer ear. That includes the pinna and the ear canal and is then funneled down to the eardrum. The eardrum takes these vibrations and sends them through the three middle ear bones called ossicles and sends them into the cochlea, which is your hearing organ. Inside of the cochlea, those vibrations are translated into neural impulses that travel up the auditory nerve to the brain so that you can hear. As you're probably gathering, hearing is complex. And at any point along this pathway, things can and do go wrong, resulting in hearing loss. This can cause sound to be weak, distorted, or even absent, and can be different between ears and oftentimes only affecting certain pitches. Because hearing loss is so unique, the cure for your hearing loss depends on which part of the auditory system is not working properly. By cure, I mean that a treatment restores the function of hearing. Let me give you a non-audiology example of a cure by using vision. If you have vision loss, you often treat it with glasses or contacts, but you haven't cured the cause of the vision loss. However, if you receive LASIK refractive eye surgery to treat your vision loss, and you no longer require glasses or contacts, then I would consider your vision loss to be cured. While not all types of hearing loss can be cured, some can. And by cure, I mean that the type of hearing loss that you have is completely gone and isn't coming back. Which reminds me to caution you that the best hearing treatment option for you cannot be provided in a YouTube video and does require in-person testing, assessment, and diagnosis by a hearing care professional. Now that that's understood, let's start this discussion off with hearing loss conditions of the outer ear that can be cured. Because the outer ear is used to capture and funnel sound waves down to the eardrum, their pathway needs to be clear and free of any major obstacles. And perhaps the most common blockage of the outer ear is due to earwax buildup. Earwax, in small quantities, is totally natural and should work its way out of your ear through jaw movements like talking and chewing. However, depending on your ear canal size and shape, you may create more wax than your ear is able to remove on its own. When the earwax builds up to the point of blocking off the entire canal, this can result in up to 30 decibels of hearing loss across frequencies, oftentimes reducing the same amount or even more sound than earplugs. But earwax isn't the only thing that can block this path. Children tend to stick all sorts of things in their ears that can block sound, and even adults can get the ends of cotton swabs or hearing aid domes stuck in the outer ear. The cure for this hearing loss is simple. The blockage has just gotta come out. Now, if you think something is actually stuck in your ear, or you feel that earwax has blocked the ear canal off entirely, 
it's pretty unlikely that you'll be successful removing this blockage or buildup on your own, and you should seek out an audiologist who specializes in earwax removal. Professional earwax removal can include procedures such as extraction using a curette, suction, irrigation, or a combination of all three. And sorry, but ear candling is not an effective form of earwax removal. If you can believe it, I have seen patients who come to hearing aid consultation appointments ready to pursue hearing treatment only to find out that they had double impactions in each ear and once removed, their hearing returned to baseline levels. So if earwax or foreign object is the cause of your hearing loss, removing the blockage would be an excellent way to cure it. As you can see, hearing loss from the outer ear has a pretty straightforward cure, but hearing loss from the middle ear is definitely more complex. Once sound waves have successfully traveled through the outer ear, they vibrate your eardrum. For this to happen, the eardrum has to be intact and functioning properly in order to be able to send those vibrations into the middle ear. A hole or perforation in the eardrum can negatively impact the reception of these sound vibrations. And this is your warning that if you don't like the sight of blood, to look away from the screen for just the next few seconds. Whether damage to the eardrum is self-inflicted, like in the case of a cotton swab pushed too far, or occurring from an ear infection so severe that it ruptures the eardrum, the tear can result in moderate amounts of hearing loss, mostly in the low pitches. In most cases, the eardrum can heal itself, but in more serious or chronic cases, this may require medical intervention. In-office procedures and surgeries can be used to repair a damaged eardrum, often restoring normal hearing, meaning that the hearing loss caused by a perforation in the eardrum is cured. Another very common cause of hearing loss that can also be cured is a middle ear infection. This type of infection occurs when infected mucus or drainage from the sinus cavities travels through the eustachian tube and into the middle ear space. This tube should open and close to let air pass through to keep the pressure between the outside world and the middle ear space equal. But after fluid and pressure builds, the eustachian tube can become blocked entirely. The result, pain, pressure, and a notable hearing loss that makes it seem as though everyone is talking to you while you are underwater. While primarily seen in young children, middle ear infections can certainly happen in adults and are generally treated through the use of antibiotics. In more chronic cases, where the fluid isn't draining out of the middle ear space as expected, an ear, nose, and throat physician can place a pressure equalization tube. This small tube is essentially an intentional opening of the eardrum, allowing built-up fluid another route to drain out of the ear. Even without a painful infection, some people have eustachian tubes that do not open and close reliably, creating a buildup of negative pressure within the middle ear space. This pressure stiffens the movement within the middle ear space, greatly reducing the travel of sound vibrations. In severe cases, this condition is also treated through the use of a pressure equalization tube, returning most of the lost hearing. I say most because some of the low pitches are still impacted until the hole is closed, but the hearing loss that you get from having a pressure equalization tube pales in comparison to the hearing loss that you would have without it. However, after the tube is removed, the hole usually repairs itself on its own and you are back to normal hearing once again. But even if the eardrum and the eustachian tube are healthy and working well, things can still go wrong with one or more of the three middle ear bones. If these bones are unable to move the appropriate amount, they cannot transfer these sound vibrations into the cochlea. One condition that can impact the movement of these bones is called otosclerosis, an abnormal buildup of calcium that limits the motion of the middle ear bones, resulting in a mild all the way up to severe level of hearing loss. Unfortunately, you can't prevent otosclerosis, but in many cases, surgery can correct it by removing the calcium buildup. And in some cases, even replacing the stapes bone with a titanium prosthetic. And for a deeper dive on otosclerosis and how it's managed, be sure to check out my video that I will have linked down in the description below. The movement of the middle ear bones can also be negatively impacted by serious head injuries, like those that are seen with car accidents and sports collisions. With enough force, the connection between these bones can be broken, a condition called ossicular chain discontinuity which is really just a fancy way to say that the middle ear bones are no longer linked together as they should be. This, of course, causes hearing loss as the pathway that the sound vibrations need to follow becomes essentially a dead end. In almost all cases, this injury requires surgical intervention 
in order to be able to put the bones back together again, but can result in a lasting cure for the hearing loss it caused. But assuming that the outer ear and the middle ear are working perfectly, there is still one more part of the ear that can cause hearing loss, the inner ear. The inner ear consists of the cochlea and the auditory nerve, connecting your ears to your brain. Hearing loss that occurs in the inner ear due to damage of the delicate hair cells within the cochlea is called a sensory neural hearing loss, as opposed to all of the other forms of hearing loss that I mentioned earlier that are known as conductive hearing losses. Sensory neural hearing loss can be caused by many things, including genetic conditions, loud noise exposure, ototoxic medications, general aging, and comorbid health conditions like diabetes, heart disease, and kidney disorders. Unfortunately, this type of hearing loss isn't related to problems with the physical structures in the ear, but rather sensory systems that are much more difficult to correct using surgery or medications. But not for lack of trying, as researchers have been working overtime trying to regenerate dead or damaged hair cells within the cochlea to restore lost hearing. So far, all attempts to cure this type of hearing loss using drugs like FX322 and FX345 molecular therapies have been unsuccessful, generally meaning that this type of hearing loss has no cure yet. However, there is one form of sensory neural hearing loss called sudden sensory neural hearing loss that some people consider potentially curable. Sudden sensory neural hearing loss is a condition in which a significant amount of hearing loss develops very quickly, often overnight, in generally only affecting one ear. Researchers have a lot of theories for why this occurs, but most suspect a viral attack of the inner ear that damages the delicate hair cells within the cochlea. One cure for this hearing loss is simply spontaneous recovery, where the body essentially just cures itself. But even without spontaneous recovery, this type of hearing loss does have a treatment option that has the possibility of curing it. Sudden hearing loss is treated with either oral steroids, steroids injected through your eardrum, or a combination of both, ideally within two weeks of onset. Even with treatment, the success rate is difficult to define since recovery can vary across different pitches and levels of sound. Some people may consider themselves cured with a full return to normal hearing. However, some never achieve a full recovery of their hearing even with the proper medical intervention. Now that we've made it through the outer, middle, and inner ear, let's recap some of the hearing loss conditions that might have a cure. Hearing loss from earwax blockage or a foreign object can be restored by simply removing the obstruction. Hearing loss from a damaged eardrum may cure itself or may require an ENT physician to step in and repair it. Hearing the hearing loss from middle ear bones that are too stiff, like with otosclerosis, or that have become completely disconnected, like ossicular chain discontinuity, can be cured surgically by an ENT. Hearing loss from fluid buildup in the middle ear space may recover naturally or may require the use of medication to fight infection and restore normal hearing. In severe cases of middle ear infection or eustachian tube dysfunction, a pressure equalization tube placed by an ENT may help to restore lost hearing. And finally, sudden hearing loss may cure itself or it may see improvements with steroid treatment, although it's not a guarantee. But even if your hearing loss cannot be cured by medications, in-office procedures, or surgeries, that does not mean that you can't see a significant improvement in hearing using hearing aids alone. Traditional hearing aids come in a variety of strengths and styles to treat almost any type or level of hearing loss. Exciting research and development has expanded hearing aid features, improved the user experience, and increased hearing aid adoption rates year over year. But the maximum benefit of these hearing aids can only be achieved if your hearing healthcare provider follows comprehensive best practices. This series of measurements and procedures must be completed with a high level of precision in order to hear your very best. But fewer than 30% of hearing healthcare providers actually follow comprehensive best practices, which is why it is so important that you find one that does. If you're looking for your own hearing loss cure, be sure to check out the directory of best practice providers over at hearingup.com to schedule a comprehensive hearing evaluation and discuss treatment options available to you. While many hearing loss conditions are still awaiting a cure, hearing treatment options are numerous and can improve your hearing dramatically, even if it doesn't cure it. That's it for this video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up 
and share it with someone that you feel could use it. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button with notification bell, what are you waiting for? Make sure you do that too so that you never miss any one of our newly released videos.